Okay, so today what we're going to be discussing is another heap problem. Um, a lot of people have wanted to see more of these problems, sorting problems, we're gonna do more of them. Um, so today's problem is called um, K sorted array or almost sorted array. The problem is you get an array, you get K. So what K represents is the final resting place of each element is at maximum K distance from where the present element sits. So for example, if I have the three here and K is three, that means three could be here, one behind where it presently sits, two behind where it presently sits, and it can't be over here, come back to the three. It can be one element past itself, two elements past itself at the eight, and then three elements past itself at the 10. So that's basically what this problem means. And I'm going to try to walk you through the exact way I thought about this, because this is not a question that I kind of premeditated. Well, for this to teach you, I'm, I took notes and stuff, but this is a problem I got practicing for interviews on a site called Pramp.com. And it's a really good site. I hope it's still around by the time you see this video. Um, but that is a very good website to practice on, and I got this question on that. So your goal is to take this information and produce a sorted array as efficiently as possible. And what you immediately think of is just sort the array, right? Just take this original array, forget about what K is, and just output a sorted array. The problem with that is immediately the best we can do with that is n log n time. Because we don't know anything about the input data, we don't know the values of the items until we look at those items, the best we can do, or the least work we will ever do, is going to be omega n log n, right? That's the least work we could do. So, what we need to see is, how can we use k? How can we use k to be more efficient about it and not use a brute force of just sorting the data? How can we actually use the k to make a more efficient algorithm. And we're going to look at how we can do that. So before I get, I don't wanna just jump to the solution because yes, we can read the solution, and understand it. I want to walk you through what I immediately did as soon as I got this question. And I went down a path that I didn't know would be, would be fruitful. I didn't know whether it would work, but let me walk you through how I was thinking about this. So I want you to consider this. What is the question actually asking? What is the question saying about every single element. And what I did was, I really thought about this and I realized that the, the K is expressing a set of possibilities. It is ex expressing a set of possibilities and what my mind was led to is, what if I expressed the complete set of possibilities at every single position? And then I did some, would do some set reduction. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know where this was going. So why don't we just follow this thought process, see where it takes us, see if this is how we can use K to help us, right? So we have the six, K is three. So six, of course, can possibly end up right where it is. So six can also end up one position away, two position away, three positions away which is K is three. So six can also be here. So now we have represented the complete set of possibilities where six could end up at the, at the end of this process, right? So what we need to do is express the set of possibilities for every item, right? And then somehow do some reduction later, but we'll see how this actually will lead us to another mental leap later, but let's continue to express the possibilities. Five. Five can, of course, end up right where it is, but five can also end up three positions this way, three positions this way. The farthest we can go is right there for five, and then three positions this way. We've expressed five, so now let's express three. Farthest three can go is this way. We can go one, two, and of course, it can be where it already is. And then three can go three positions that way. So do you see what I'm doing here? Do you see how we're taking the definition of the problem. We don't know where we're going with our thought process, but we're going somewhere, and we're, we're representing exactly what the problem is saying. And through this, we're going to see a pattern, and these are the key little, these are the, these are the key, key small, oh fuck, what am I trying to These are the small things you need to follow because they'll eventually lead to a small exit way. They'll lead to an exit way to the actual solution. So we process three, let's process two. So two, 
it can end up right where it is, or it can end up three this way, three that way. So let's go one, two, three, and then let's go one, two, three that way, those last indices. So now let's express where eight can go. It can stay where it is. It can go three this way. It can go three that way. And now let's express 10. It can stay where it is, or it can go three this way, three that way. And finally, we're gonna express nine. Nine can go three this way, it can stay where it is, or it can go three that way. It can't go that way, so all we can do is keep it where it is, or come this way. And so this is exactly what I had drawn out. Obviously, I had a different example, but this is exactly what I had drawn out. I drew like some set brackets, and I was like, yeah, this is what this problem is saying to me. How do I use this information to tell me where an item belongs? So. This is, this is the point where we really need to do some critical thinking and we need to really think about what it means for an array to be sorted, where elements should go, and what this possibility space does to dictate where items will end up, right? So index zero, what are the, what are the possibilities of items that could end up here at the end of sorting based on k? Well, two can end up here, three can end up here, five and six can end up there. That's really interesting because these are the only possibilities based on K and the array we're given. So this is, this, is the, this is the biggest leap you need to make. This is what will lead you to the answer. What item of these four items belongs in the first position? Well, if the array is sorted going from smallest to largest, the smallest item needs to be the item that gets placement. And whenever we're trying to find the largest, whenever we're trying to find the smallest, whenever we're dealing with size, k largest, k smallest, we immediately think of data structures because we know our data structures, we know how to do heap sort, we know how to deal with, a, implement a binary heap, we know about heaps. We can find the smallest item using a heap and we know that it's going to be two. So two's gonna get the placement, and let's, let's see how that affects things. Okay, we placed two, and now first position's finished, and now two, it cannot be anywhere else. It cannot be anywhere else. Two can't be anywhere because two is there. Two belongs there, right? So let's destroy two. We don't need it anywhere else. Okay, so there's a lot of explanations of this problem, and they explain how this works, but this is... This is the underneath understanding. This is what's happening. This is the deeper um, thing that's happening underneath when we're reducing our decision space like this, when we're pulling the item that belongs. It fundamentally changes what items can belong in what positions, if you see, right? So look at this next position. We're now gonna try to place over here. And, and do you see the pattern? Do you see something that, do you see a pattern here? We're dealing with four items again. We're doing the same thing, and what item belongs there? These are the only, only possible items that can go here. So what item goes there? The smallest item. So three gets the placement, and three cannot go anywhere, anywhere else. And we're done with that position. And now we're placing for the next position. And do you see how many items? We have four items. And we need to find the smallest item of these items, and that item is five. Five gets the placement. And five cannot be anywhere else. So I think I just messed up crossing out that thing, but it's fixed now. So next, we're working on this position. We have nine, 10, eight, and six. So the item that belongs there is six. And six cannot be anywhere else. And so we eliminated that. Again, I think that was probably a mistake. And now we need to place in the rest of the positions. And as you can see, it just becomes eight, nine, and 10. So this is how this problem is done optimally, or this is one approach. I don't know if there's other approaches, but this is one approach to it, using a min heap to formalize the way we do this. We grab the first k plus one elements. Remember how there were, there were four elements here? k is three. We grab the first k plus one elements. Find the largest, find the smallest one. Grab the next item, find the smallest one. Grab the next item, find the smallest one. Until we're done with items to grab, then we just place the items that are left in the heap. And there's code in the description to explain this, code in the description. 
It's fairly straightforward when you really think about it, but I think this serves as a really in-depth understanding to this, for you to really understand what's happening. And this is exactly what happened. I started out not knowing what to do, and I just winged it. I just drew sets and I said, this is what needs to happen. This is the way the problem should look. How do I formalize this into an approach? And then I realized what was important at every single step. The most important thing was the smallest items that could possibly be in this position. So what we did was we found that smallest item using a min heap and we just kept doing that rolling through the array. Um, so again, the code is in the description for this problem. I hope this serves as a better in-depth explanation to this. And we should look at time and space complexities now um, to really understand what we just did. All right, so our, our time and space complexity are going to be, so first of all, let's define our variables here. N is the total items in the array, and K is the, the distance, the distance that an item can be from its final position, left and right. What we need to consider is, what are we doing for each element? Every element is going to touch the min heap we're using. Remember, min heap keeps the smallest item at the top. And well, depending on how you implement it, it might not be a binary heap, it might be a linked list, of, so there's really no top. But whatever, the, the, the smallest item is going to be at the top of the heap. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna place every single item in the array is gonna get a run at the heap. It's going to enter it. So we're going to have n items. And how much work do we do per n item? So what we are going to do is we're going to do a logarithmic um, amount of work with respect to the maximum elements we're keeping in the heap. This is an upper bound. So the maximum work we will do on insertion into our heap is going to be logarithmic with respect to k. Because our heap is going to hold k plus one elements. Why is it going to hold k plus one elements? Well, remember that first position. k was three, we had to consider four items for that position. And elements, each element gets an insertion, the insertion takes log k. And again, why does it take log k? Well, we have videos on um, implementing a binary heap, on heap sorts, on logarithms. So you can investigate that further yourself, but it's, I've already explained it in other videos, so I don't wanna belabor the point. It has to do with the height of the uh, structure and if it's a binary heap and stuff like that. So continuing on to the space, the space we're going to use is O of K. We're going to hold K plus one items at maximum in the min heap, and we just remove that plus one, and we're just left with K, and we bound to O of K. And that is basically it. That's the time, that's the space, and that is how you solve this problem. I think this is one way to do it. I don't know if there's a better way. I don't think there's a better way. Um, but yeah, that's how this problem's approached, and that's the um, core understanding and the thought process that I walked through and that one could go through solving this, um, using this approach. So, all right, so that is all for this video. If you like this video, hit the like button, um, subscribe to the channel. Uh, my goal is to make this a very large resource for software engineering interviews, help as many software engineers get hired in the next one to two years that I am a student and possibly after that. I don't really know where this project's gonna go in that time, but that's the goal of this, just to help as many people as possible find the jobs that they want. So that's what we're doing. And uh, yeah. <laughs>